Hello you guys! So, as you can see, we are still in Melbourne, or for you guys, just some random hotel, I guess. I could be anywhere in the world, but we are in Melbourne. Uh, and this video will be... I don't know, maybe it'll be a discussion video, maybe it'll be more of a life update, maybe... Yeah, maybe a combo of the two. Uh, so, for those of you guys who follow my channel, you know that I've been living in Australia now for, what is this, my fifth month? Five months? Uh, and I have very, very, very mixed feelings about this place. Probably more mixed feelings than most places I've been or lived. I think I'm somebody who's normally pretty quick to be like, I hate it or I love it. <laughs> uh... And Australia has a lot of things that I think I make me understand why a lot of people really, really love Australia. And a lot of people are like, oh my god, my dream is to travel in Australia or to visit Australia someday. Uh, it's very, very clean. It's very, very organized. As of right now, they have a social system that is still working-ish. Uh, more so than in a lot of places especially in Europe, where, you know, in Germany, the social system is really near collapse. Um, and in a lot of other European countries, it's also very near collapse, if it hasn't collapsed already. Uh, you know, they do a lot for the environment. A lot, like, a lot of museums are free if you're local. Uh, it's safe. It's organized. You know, so I can see where a lot of people especially people who aren't world travelers like myself, who are more like vacationers. Like I would say there's travelers and there's vacationers. I'm a traveler. I'm not a vacationer. And, and this is not to talk down on people who are vacationers, right? I think if you work a lot, have a hard job, and you know, you're like, I get my two or three weeks of paid vacation. I want to go someplace that's clean and organized where I can go to a nice, comfortable cafe and a good spa and a great pool or something, then I understand that you're going to be like, yeah, I want to go to some place like Australia or Norway or, I don't know, Florida or something like that. Sorry. You know you got too much time on your hands if you have time to drink water in a video. Good YouTubers edit that kind of stuff out. Uh, so those are all things that I think I can really... I can really understand where people are really attracted to Australia. Um, but I have to honestly tell you, I, I, the, the longer I'm here, the more I think Australia is going in the next 10, 15, max 20 years, I think Australia is really going to be a live example of a country that has almost completely given up personal freedom and liberties for the sake of large government. Uh, by which I mean, I know I have viewers from Australia so I'm gonna I want to try to not completely offend them by saying this but I have to say sorry I I think something that is really shocking to me in Australia is I think people the people here really lack a backbone uh, they are so in inundated as that word in wokeism to a degree that I have not seen anywhere in the Western world. Wokeism rules in Australia. Uh, the amount of self-flagellation that white people have here, to me, is insane. Every building, every store, every museum, everything, everywhere you go, it's this, like, this land belongs to the Aboriginal people. It's always belonged to the Aboriginal people. White people are scum. White people are disgusting. We should be ashamed. We have to bow down to the 
Aboriginal people who have the oldest culture in the world, the most magnificent culture in the world. They are the best human beings that have ever existed. And now all of the foreigners coming in so much better than us horrible white people who are just completely disgusting. I, I, I wish I could literally erase myself and my race from this world to get rid of the, the curse <laughs> that is the white man, especially the white Australian who is just disgusting. I mean, the just gay flags everywhere, everywhere, free Palestine actually walked by. And I know this is a very nuanced topic where I'm still not 100% sure how I feel, how I think. That's why I haven't really dived too much more deeper into this because I'm like, there's so much nuance to it that I just don't want to. But I was walking by this store today and I saw a woman who works at the store wiping off uh, graffiti that said infinada, infidada, infinada, whatever it was called, which was like when they mass killed Jewish people in the past. Uh, you know, everywhere talking about how amazing women are, how amazing gay people are. The trans flag is on every building sidewalks are with the rainbow flag buses every store has it and like everywhere aboriginal and aboriginal people are amazing and this is aboriginal land and you know i am um, and i think right now australia is kind of is kind of at a place where the government is has what am I trying to say? So the thing with Australia is Australia is very comfortable. It's very comfortable to live in Australia. I think for first world nations, I think the living standard is relatively high. The the income is relatively good. I know like people who are from Australia, they're probably going to disagree with me on this, but I think that you could probably be a barista or employee in like Kmart or something and you could still afford a maybe not a loan maybe it'd have to be a shared apartment or something but still like an actual apartment not like a studio with seven people and the bathroom is shared with 12 other studios or like in Manhattan or something like that like you could still manage to live within the city and be able to survive and actually still have a life and all this kind of stuff. Uh, now I know that there's like statistics and some, in some statistics they say, you know, Sydney is one of the top five most expensive cities to live in by the cost of living and other ones it's not even in the top 10. I have to honestly tell you guys, I don't really trust those statistics. Uh, for one thing, those kind of statistics rely on a government and <laughs> that is willing to share those kind of statistics openly and also uh, collect those kind of statistics. There's a lot of places in the third world where they don't even bother to do these kind of things because honestly they don't care. Uh, and I just feel like, you know, if in Australia the average, something that's really weird in Australia for those of you guys who don't live, have never been here or lived here, um, they pay weekly rent. I've never been to any other place that does that. They don't pay monthly rent, they pay weekly rent. So I would say in Sydney downtown, you probably pay, you could probably live with maybe one roommate, maybe even a small studio for about 2,000 Australian dollars a month, which is probably around 1,200 US dollars, around 1,000 euros a month. Um, that is already almost impossible in Stuttgart, where I come from. So, you know, and now, I'm sorry, but if, if the average Australian employee earns, I don't know, probably like five, six thousand a month, um, you know, again, this is like if you're lower to medium income and um, you know we're looking at half or less than half of your rent a lot of your income going to rent 
which in a major city is kind of normal, I would say. Uh, now, compare that to a place like, I don't know, Lagos or Caracas or, I don't know, um, I don't know, Bangkok, I don't know, these, these kind of, like these kind of places where you're going to pay, if you're going to live in the city and you want a studio or your maybe a, an apartment that you only share with other, one other person and that apartment, you know, only costs, only costs a hundred or 150, 200 dollars a month. You know, for us, it's like, oh my God, that's so dirt cheap. Yeah, but those people probably earn around 400, maybe dollars a month right so i think like <laughs> at the end of the day i'm like their cost of living is just as high as it is for us when they're paying at least half of their income towards rent um anyway totally went on a fun rant but you guys know that from me already uh point is i think living here is still pretty comfortable like i said they have social medicine big daddy government takes care of everything they're Everything is organized. You know, they have the thought police. Don't you don't have to, don't do any thinking. We'll tell you what's right. We'll tell you what's wrong. The Australian people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You take care of it. You know, everything that's even. They don't even have a conservative party in Australia, and they freak out about like the most minute little things in this country about being like far left. I'm like, oh my god. Somebody doesn't think nine-month abortion is acceptable. I mean, like, literally crazy conservative person, right? So, I think due to the fact that life is so comfortable here for people right now still, I think that is part of what is adding to the fact that I think a lot of Australian people are being so passive about the fact that they are completely giving up all of their personal liberties, right? I mean, just, you know, freedom of speech, you know, freedom of thought to a lot of degrees, being allowed to be proud of your heritage if you happen to be a white Australian who have also been here now for at least, what, 150, 200 years as well, um, to take pride in what white Australians have achieved in this country. Because, I mean, if you think about I mean, this was a penal colony for a good chunk of their history. And they turned it around and made it one of the most organized, law-abiding, clean places in the Western world, right? And I don't know. Like, the point I'm trying to say is, for me, I am I could not. I'm going to do the... Well, well, some things are still up in the air. <laughs> still up in the air after five months. And my plan was to do a year here. If that comes to pass, I will do my year. But I, I personally could ne I would never feel comfortable settling down here. Like it's, I, I feel so. The wokeism here to me is so oppressing where people are so scared to say anything that can in any way shape or form be allowed everywhere you go all, oh, all, like all the public museums because today i went to the museum again all the employees at the museum had like pronoun buttons and le leotards no not leotards lanyards lanyards with like the gay flag and the aboriginal flag and I, it Mm, it's just so it's just way too much it's so like I said this I and now they're letting in a lot a lot of immigrants um, as I told you guys in yesterday's video I'm actually relatively liberal with immigrants but I think what Australia and Canada in the past used to do is they had a really strong vetting system where they were like, we will let immigrants in that uh, that we need according to the jobs or something that we need. Where I feel like now Australia is becoming a lot more liberal and there are a lot, there's definitely a lot of favoritism to immigrants 
coming from non-white places for the sake of, again, once again showing, oh my God, we're such a progressive and non-racist place, right? Which is, again, naturally going to shift the type of country this is and what the nation stands for. And Australia is more and more moving into more and more liberal, liberal policies. Actually, one of the things I, meant, I was going to talk about in this video, totally forgot, sorry, uh, was there was just a landmark case here in Australia. It's called Tickle, Tickles, Tickles versus Giggles, I think. I know, it's real, real name sounds really, sounds like made up. And it is a, it was, it was a case where a trans woman was suing um, a woman who created an app that was for women only. And the judge, I don't want to go into everything, blah, 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 but basically the judge, the judge in this case said that he does, that he agrees with the trans woman that it was, it was against the right of the woman to exclude the trans woman because if it says female on, because the trans woman had, had his birth certificate changed, sorry, I'm not playing that game, had his birth certificate changed and had like his driver's license changed to now say female on it. And because now the birth certificate that has been changed now says female and the driver's license now says female, the judge didn't feel comfortable to say that he was not a female and because of that, he won the case. So basically, in this landmark case, this judge now set a president, 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 that says trans women are real women. And you can imagine what kind of repercussions that's going to have in this society. What the repercussions of allowing so many immigrants coming in through a non-vetting system anymore is going to have on this society. So I feel like right now, Australia is still able to kind of hold it together. But like I said, I, and I'm not gonna say that they're gonna fail, you know, maybe, I, now, you guys know, I don't believe in socialism. I don't believe in all of this, hating yourself and hating the fact that you're white and being so, so much hating the fact that you're white because you've got put so much white guilt on yourself that you now have to call yourself trans or non-binary to get some oppression points. I don't believe in any of that crap. I don't, I don't feel that way. Um, I, but I have to say, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Australia is going to show in the next 10, 15 years that all of these over-the-top liberal policies are actually going to create a utopian society. It's possible. I think it's not. I think they're going to fail. Um, you know, especially if another pandemic is coming, which I believe at some point in time will. You know, right now, actually, <laughs> something else I should mention. I'm here in Mel like I said, I'm in Melbourne, Melbourne, and Perth, and Sydney were the three cities I really, really wanted to see in Australia. And one of the things I have to say, even though Sydney is it's very clean. It's very organized. I think there's not really a lot of culture. Melbourne, I think, has a bit more cultural vibe and a bit more of a European feel, but way dirtier. So dirty. A drug addicts on every corner, homeless people on every corner. I actually almost got run over by a drug addict today because I guess I was near his camp, you know, <laughs> in like a public park. I walked past like his tents. I guess I was too close, so he like almost ran me over and was like cussing me out. Um, and I actually talked with my friend Ranma, like in, in Victoria, the state of Victoria, where Melbourne is in, was one of the strictest and most crazy when it came to the COVID thing. And like it had an impact in this place comparatively to other places that were, weren't as crazy about the whole situation, right? So, I just have my doubts that Australia is going to be looking very good in about 10, 15 years because the people are going to give up, are going to be completely have given up all of their personal rights and liberties for the sake of big daddy government taking care of everything. And big daddy government, like I told you guys, in a world where everything was perfect and hu all humans were altruistic and all humans only had empathy and cared about other people, I would love it if we had communism. But that's not how humans are. 
humans are greedy and power hungry and selfish and narcissistic. That's just the way human beings are. They take care of themselves, then their own, and maybe if then there's a little bit left, it'll trickle down to everybody else. But more than likely, they're going to just keep the, the overage as well for themselves because they're going to be greedy for it. So communism and socialism just does not work. If you give all the power to the government, the government is going to end up taking advantage of it. So I don't know. I'm, I, I am a little bit fearful for the Australian people, especially the self-hating white people who I think are just completely kind of going like, oh yeah, we're, we are so terrible, you know, my great, great, great ancestor did something bad to the aboriginals, so I obviously don't deserve my rights, I don't deserve to have my freedom of thought, you know, break into my home and check to see if, everybody, if I don't have too many people in my house during the COVID times, which is something that really happened in this country, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know, I... It's just too much, you guys. And now with all now with that with this lock with this case, I think women in this country are there. They have a bad awakening happening. Because trust me, I've seen a lot of very non-convincing trannies running around in this in this country already. And it's really and I'm really waiting for things to come to a head with now them having so many Muslim immigrants. And you know the Muslims they don't play this crap. So. It's going to be really interesting when that first situation happens where it's going to be like the Muslims versus versus the trannies. Um, we saw a couple of videos come out with all that pro-Palestine stuff and then like the, the, the actual Palestinians saying like, we don't want these gay people here, we don't want this queer Palestine here, and like the gays being like, what? You don't want us to be part of your movement? <laughs> It's like, no, they don't. Like, you guys not pay attention to, like, the reality of the world. So, yeah. Uh, if you are from Australia, what do you think? How do you feel about this country? Do you think I'm being overly harsh and I'm not really understanding it? Or are you also fearful of the same things that I'm saying? You know, have you been to Australia? Do you want to come here? What are your thoughts? Did you watch that case, Tickles versus Giggles? What are your thoughts on that? Are trans women real women and they deserve all the rights of women and to go into women's spaces? What do you think? That's it. Bye.